Hello. I promised you a follow-up video to the Friday Functions video that talks about filtering. So that's what this one will be doing. So let me first show you basically what I did. Instead of the sorting, in this case, we're focusing on filtering. So I put three drop-downs up here. And basically, each drop-down is filtering this uh, data set. Now, the problem with just putting three drop-downs up there is that your users will misunderstand the results. And what I mean by that is um, if they pick a combination that doesn't work, for instance, the in the East Coast, we had a rep named Jones, and he sold three binders. But if I choose desk, Jones didn't sell any desk. And in order for this filter to be accurate, we must use the N operator. So they will they will maybe assume it's not working, even though in fact it is correct. There are no desks being sold by Jones in the East Coast. So here's what I did to make this a better experience. And then I'm gonna show you a an even better, in my opinion, even better option for doing this kind of thing. All right, so I'm going to come into edit mode, and <clears throat> I want to point out my formula that I'm using for the actual data table. I'm just going to zoom in a bit here so you can see it. All right, so basically there is a filter that says to filter sales by region where drop, drop down region, I usually call them DDs when they're drop-downs, drop-down region selected value and rep equals drop-down rep selected value and item equals drop-down item selected value. So that's basically what your data table is going to need in order to filter it by the drop-downs above. But because we're using and uh, it's important that we help our user with those drop downs, right? Because it, or won't work in this case, because if we try to use or, then um, the the rep may cancel out the region, which means we'll end up with east, west, and central, even though we all we have Jones completely. So we need to use and we just need to help our users with the drop down. And let me show you what I mean. So I'm going to go into the drop down east and I actually would like this to be um, more cascading and I'll show you how you can do that so, uh, so that it's not random selections but you can you can do it random just as long as you account for the fact that the user doesn't know who has what so this DD region is set to distinct sales in uh, for region because that's kind of like starting point what region do you want to start with, right? But this second one um, has uh, a sorting because there's so many of them. So there's so many representatives that I'm sorting. FYI, you can definitely set this up so that the rep looking at the screen only sees his own, which would eliminate one of these drop downs. I think you know how to do that. So in this case, I want to change this function right here. Because if I click on the sort by columns, it starts by the source. And this distinct is the source. But I actually want to filter my distinct as well. So watch as I do this. I'm going to do filter sales where region equals dd region dot selected dot value. Um, and then in there, I want the I want the um, rep to come back, right? So basically, what I'm saying, my source is is the distinct values of rep only in sales where region equals the drop down. And, and basically what this prevents is from that second drop-down having something that is not in the East region. 
which would end up with a blank screen here, right? Now you want to do the same thing on the third one, um, is change this, and you can use an and statement here. There's no problem with ands of twos. It gets crazy when you get too many ands, though. I'm going to do, I'm going to change my filter here. I'm going to do filter sales, um, where region equals dd region dot selected dot value. And then I want, uh, I want another and statement here. And rep equals dd I'm sorry dd rep dot selected dot value so now I am actually filtering on the first two okay so in this case when they run the app they will never be shown something in here that's not in the East Coast so basically, they, it, it'll, fil it'll filter the dropdown so that they only get values that are, exist in the East Coast. And then same thing here, you know, they only get values that exist in the East Coast that are done by the guy named Parent, right? And if I change the guy to Jones, now it gives me a different set here. So that's the way you kind of account for the fact that we're using an AND statement. But in my opinion... You can improve on this. Remembering <clears throat> that you're using Power Apps, Power Apps can have enriched user experience. So here's how I would visualize this. And I would like to do this app over again because I really like this challenge. But like here, I would run this app and I would have a map, right? So I wouldn't have to filter my table so much, right? I could come into the central post. I would set the screen to be to be something that um, I would set the screen to be to be already locked down to the representative looking at this screen. That's probably something I might do since these guys are are not in my Active Directory. I can't show you that, but that's one thing you probably could figure out what to do there. And then I have this. I only have one filter. Now, you might have noticed that when I came into the screen, the filter had not kicked in. And that's because I have it updating a variable on change. And so when we came into this screen, we didn't have a variable set. So what I could do is set that on screen to the variable. So let me show you what I mean. This particular item drop down, just kind of get up there. This drop down right here has an on change event that sets a a uh, variable called my item which is used in the filter in the table i could put that in the on visible property so that we don't start with nothing and that's what it would have made this better okay I'm sorry, control Z. We're on the control, and I meant to do it on the screen. Sorry. So I'm going to control X this out, say true. And these are things that I bet you happen to you too. You have the wrong thing selected. Then I'm going to select this green and put the on, on visible property, not the visible property, the on visible property, where I'll set that to the, to the, to the default value of the dropdown. Okay, and now it should default to the first one when we come in. So I'm just going to go back to running this app, go to central, and now it's defaulting to binder. And then if I change it to another one, it'll go to that one. But this, this um, dropdown also needs to be filtered so that it doesn't contain anything outside of the central region. All right, so that's basically how you would handle filtering. I bet you can think of other ways. It's easiest when you go from gallery to data table. But in this case, um, the user who requested this really wanted it to come from a table. So I, I did that first with the first screen.
just keep in mind that in that first scenario where you're doing all of your filtering in one page, you need to check your drop downs and make sure that they filter so that the user can't select something that doesn't apply to what they've already selected. The last thing you might want to do is you might want to set an update context. So when you change this one, you could set a variable that will allow you to see this one. So let me show you how this would look, right? So I'm going to do an on change event here. This way they see them one at a time too. But then again, once they're on the page together, it doesn't matter, but I think it's important for them to see the hierarchy. So I could do on change or east, right? And then up in here, I can do update context or set to whatever you get you like. Whenever I'm on a single page, I'll do update context. Update context, <coughs> show rep, and I'll make that true. So basically what I'm saying is when you change this, make the rep true. And then on this one, I might copy this so I don't have to type it again. Control C, Control C, and then put this in the on change of this one. But this one is going to show the item, right? So this would be show item, not show rep. Show item. Darn it. Sorry. Show item equals true, right? So that means that um, I would set this guy over here. It's visible property. If you have to watch this video a couple of times, because I'm talking about a lot, I know. So I'm going to hide the, yep, the item drop down and set its visible property. I'm going to set my visible property to show item. tab equals true. Okay, so now that won't show unless show item is true. And this one, I'm going to set the, the visible property to show rep equals true. Okay, so the experience that you'll have as a result is now when I come into the app, I see just one. But if I, you know, maybe change the region, and it would it would have everything because you know there's nothing to filter yet, then I would change <coughs> that to to what I need, and then so it's like more of a cascading drop down scenario, not absolutely necessary because now this still works even though it's not in that order. It still works, but you might want to think about that. All right. Well, I hope this is helpful in filtering tables. It would work in the gallery as well. The only reason I use the table is because I, I don't have to type the headers at the top. Um, with the gallery, you could definitely make the gallery a table. And I actually will add a video to my um, YouTube channel that shows how to make a table out of a gallery. We've recorded that a while back. The UI might be different on the right and the left, but the functionality for how to do it is the same. All right. Thank you so much and have a great week.